Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidate interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Louise Robbins, and I would like to introduce Satya Rhodes Conway, running for Madison Mayor. As we begin, please tell our viewers a bit about yourself and why you're running for mayor. Thanks, Louise. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Satya Rhodes Conway, and I'm running for mayor because everyone should have the opportunity to thrive. I moved here almost 20 years ago now for an internship, um, I've since gotten great jobs, live in a wonderful neighborhood. Madison's given me a lot of opportunity, but I'm really mindful that not everyone has that opportunity. There are folks who have been here their whole lives that can't afford to buy a house. And there are folks that, like me, are just moving here now for school or a career um, that can't afford to be in the city of Madison, and that's not right. Um, I'm running because we need to work on affordable housing, rapid transit, racial disparities, and being prepared for climate change. In spite of Madison's being a generally safe city, a recent spate of car thefts, break-ins, and burglaries have left Madisonians feeling uneasy. How would you tackle this situation? I think folks are right to feel uneasy. Overall, our city is as safe as it's ever been, but it is concerning when we see something like this. Um, obviously, we need to have adequate enforcement, but I think the real solution is in the long term to understand what are the patterns that we're seeing. So some of the reason that we see this is because of issues like mental health or addiction, and we need to make sure we have adequate services on that side. And some of it is just kids who are getting into trouble, and we need to make sure that they have opportunities to do positive things with their time instead of negative things like taking cars. And so I want to invest in mentorship programs, um, and opportunities, physical spaces throughout the city where kids can go and be kids and stay out of trouble. Madison's efforts to address chronic homelessness have appeared to fall short, especially with regard to providing sufficient support systems for a housing first approach. What new ideas do you have that might create greater success for projects such as the one on Tree Lane? I am a strong believer in a housing first approach, but I think you're absolutely right. We need to make sure that we're providing adequate wraparound services. Um, and part of that's the investment, but part of that's making sure that the management team in place is well connected to the community and the service providers in the community and understands the sort of Wisconsin context around funding. So I think we need to do a better job there. Uh, but I also think it's important that we understand that the homeless population is not monolithic. So they aren't, they aren't all facing the same barriers to housing and make sure that we're using a variety of approaches to overcome the multiple barriers to housing that people experience. The Madison Police Department has been faulted for not having appropriate policies and training around de-escalation and use of force, especially with regard to people of color. What is your perspective on whether any changes are needed in ways Madison police operate in our community? I do believe that change is needed, and, and I am eagerly awaiting the work of the Task Force on Police Policy and Procedure, and they are preparing now a report that will address these issues. Um, and I'm eager to see what's in that. I have read uh, several times the OIR report, which was commissioned, and I think that the recommendations in there, there's too many to talk about right now because there's like a hundred and something of them, um, but I think those are good recommendations, and I know we've already started implementing them, and we need to continue. Uh, in particular, I think accountability at the highest levels in the police department um, to making change is really important. In what ways can and should the city interact with and support the schools in their efforts to promote academic success for all students, regardless of class, race, language background, or gender identity. The schools are absolutely critical to uh, our city's health, and so we need to be working closely with the school district and the school board um, to make sure that we're supporting the efforts uh, inside the schools with a wraparound outside the schools. So looking at out-of-school time efforts, um, which is, are already underway, but making sure that we're supporting families throughout the community, um, whether that is with um, work around language access and literacy, um, or activities for kids um, in our neighborhood and community centers, um, or just making sure that basic needs are met. So again, I come back to housing and transportation and access to healthy food all being critical uh, for providing the environment in which kids can succeed uh, academically. There is a perception that Madison's story is a tale of two cities, one in which people of color are less likely to experience success. 
What can be done to ensure that Madison is a community in which all people can thrive? Mm. We have a lot of work to do here. Um, Madison is, uh, in, in effect, two cities. And we need to, I think it starts with recognizing that we really do have deep racial disparities um, and acknowledging the amount of work that we have to do to overcome institutional and structural racism. Um, some of the things that I think the city can do uh, is better engagement with community, not just here's our plan, please react to it, uh, but genuine um, what is needed in neighborhoods, what is needed in your community, um, listening and uh, feeding back to the community how we uh, acted on what we heard. Another thing that I think we need to invest in is entrepreneurship, particularly in communities of color and in the black community, uh, so that we are supporting entrepreneurs and creating the kinds of businesses that serve communities of color. Um, a lot of what we've already talked about, the school work, um, housing, transportation, food, all of this needs to be done with an eye towards equity and making sure that we are investing in traditionally underserved and disinvested communities. What changes, if any, would you make to the ways in which Madison approaches major developments, such as Judge Doyle Square or the public market? Hmm. Um, so for publicly led developments, um, I think we need to stay focused on priorities and on addressing uh, the needs of the community. So for me, I think the biggest need in development is housing. And, and we can talk about whether that ought to be publicly led or not, but we need to be making sure that we're producing enough housing units to meet the demand that exists, but also the demand that's coming um, in, the, in the future. Um, I'm not uh, a fan of way, the way that the Judge Doyle Square development has been handled. I think we've wasted a lot of money there, um, and I would have taken a completely different approach to that. Um, I do think that it's great that we are going to have a public market, but I'm I want to be very careful about how much public money goes into operating that. Uh, more broadly, on the uh, private side of development, I think it's important for us to align our plans, our zoning, our TIF funding, uh, urban design districts, to be sending a clear signal about what the city wants and what it doesn't want. It should be easy to develop what we want and hard to develop what we don't want. At times, communication between the mayor and Alder seems difficult. Is this a problem? And if so, how would you improve communication? This has been a problem um, for the entire term, uh, current term of the incumbent. I watched it happen when I was on the council, um, and it has gotten worse since then. Um, the mayor and council have to work together. We are leading the city together, and uh, you can't have the kind of breakdown in communication that exists now. Uh, because I have served more recently on the city council, um, I have a lot of ideas about how to support the council and how to bring them in as partners in um, crafting a vision for this city and then actually working on it together. Um, but I'm very committed to having a collaborative leadership style, not just with the council, but with the county and the school districts surrounding municipalities and, frankly, the entire community. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? I'm really excited about the opportunity to make Madison a place um, that is where everyone has opportunity, everybody can thrive. Um, we do need to work on affordable housing and rapid transit and racial equity and being prepared for climate change, but none of these problems are unique and none of them are unsolvable. Together we can do this. I ask your, for your vote on April 2nd and you can learn more at satyaformadison.com. That's S A T. YA for Madison.com. Thank you. I want to thank Satya Rhodes Conway for speaking with us and the viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates. Please vote in this and every election. On behalf of Madison City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, I thank you for joining us. <laughs>